Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. So it's our last final full day on the island and we've had, oh, we've had such an amazing, amazing time. Yesterday we did the, we walked the ancient caldera route from Imero Vigili. I pronounced that wrong, <laughs> forgive me, but Imero Vigili up to Ia um, and then back, which was just absolutely breathtaking. And then we did a jet ski safari, which I would 100% recommend. It was such a brilliant, brilliant day. But we thought we would spend about a few hours this morning um, basically showing you guys some of the wedding venues. Now, we're not going to be able to get around all of the wedding venues because there are so, so many on the island. So this definitely isn't a complete list of venues that I'm going to show you today. There definitely are more, but I'm just going to try and get around as many as possible. Um, some of the ones that we went to go and look at. Um, before we chose our venue and just show you guys as much as possible and we're kind of going to show it to you from a little bit of a different perspective because when you come to the island like I said in my I think I said it in my first ever video on planning a Santorini wedding which was my top five tips video I'll link it up above if you guys want to go and check it out um but one of my recommend <laughs> one of my recommendations was to come to the island and actually view the venues themselves because we personally found that they looked quite a bit different in real life than they did in the pictures and they had quite like a little bit of a different feel for them um obviously when you go and look on their websites and everything you can see like the inside of the venue very clearly but what it doesn't really show you is what's around the venue, what's next to the venue, what roads are there, what the kind of the views are like um, kind of in real life, um, not taking from just kind of certain angles, if that makes sense. Um, and I got a lot of questions on that first video asking me, um, asking me more about this because there were quite a few people that obviously can't come out to the island um, to look at venues in advance. So I thought I'd kind of show you kind of try and show you as much as possible as if you were physically here looking on the island. Now, we don't have any appointments to go inside of any of these venues. Um, some are definitely more private than others, so I'll be able to show you more of the inside of some venues than others. But what I'm definitely going to do is show you the full outside of each venue, show you what's actually around it, um, you know, roads and um, that kind of thing and just the general atmosphere and how it actually looks um, and hopefully that will be helpful for some of you guys um, especially um, the people who are watching who actually can't get out to the island um, themselves because I know there's a lot of I think I had a quite a few um, American ladies message me um, so obviously it's a bit of a longer trip to come um, just to look around venues so hopefully this will be helpful if you do like the video today please give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe and if you turn on the bell you'll also get the notifications for my upcoming videos so let's get going hey guys so we're just at Santos winery so this is where Thomas and I had our ceremony uh, which was a week ago yeah we go tomorrow so we've been married six days um, so this is the view so um, Santos Winery is actually up at Pagos Village, so you get a completely different view um, than down at the venues um, near Emero Vigili. This is as close as I can kind of get to this one because it is closed off. Um, so this is at a working winery. Um, so the winery is just over here, so people have like wine tours here and you can have lunch here. Um, and then the ceremony area is just a little bit separate. Um, so this one is quite private because like I said, this is, it's basically just a car park behind me for the winery. Um, there's no through roads, there's absolutely nothing in front. That is literally just the cliff edge in, in front of the winery there. This is the entrance. So you pull up here um, and you come out into this gorgeous doorway. Um, now it is all locked up, so I can't get in to show you, but you come down here, there's a couple of little steps and then there's the kind of the walkway down to the ceremony area um, just there. The current time is half one. So one thing to bear in mind with all these venues is that the lighting on them is going to be very slightly different because um, ceremonies take place, you know, between 5 and 6 p.m. So the sun is more kind of over here and it's much softer lighting um, than, the, than the daylight um, than the daylight sun. Um, but then you can just kind of see over here the winery again. Hey guys, so this is the back of La Ciel, so this is the ceremony area. Um, there is a road that runs um, between La Ciel and the incredible view here. I do believe that um, when the ceremony is on, they do try and stop people walking along this road um, for 15 minutes. 
Um, that's what I was told um, anyway when I came to look around. This road is actually the ancient route between um, Thera, which is in this direction, and Ia, which is here. So this is one of the main walking routes of the island, um, and this is part of the walking route um, that we did yesterday. Um, and then for Le Ciel, um, it is an inside seating um, for when you're having your dinner uh, that's taking place um, just in um, this building here just so you can see a little bit more so that is the ceremony area then the reception area um, and then this is the road in front um, and this is your view here like i said i'm not going inside because um, i don't have an appointment to go inside um, and i think there are you know if you there are a lot of pictures of the inside of the ceremony um uh, sorry the reception area um on their website so you can see but it is fully air conditioned and it is quite a large venue lucille as well so if you have a bigger wedding um that would be definitely something to consider i will nip around as well to show you um how you can uh, you know the entrance to it um if you know when you're arriving in the bridal car um because there's there's no accommodation here this is the front of lucille so this is the entrance so um because there's nowhere to stay here if you're getting dropped off in the bridal car you would be um dropped off here so so it's very very private sorry let's wait for, let's wait for that car to go past and um, this is very private from the front because it has all the trees so you sorry um, and this faces um the east that's the east side of the island um so just have a little bit of a around here so you drive along here in your car and you'd get dropped off at the front door here hey guys so we just arrived at rockabella hotel so rockabella is actually a hotel again this has got the absolutely stunning stunning views um, and then rockabella actually has three different areas where you can get married and have your ceremony and this is actually one of them here so this bit here I think when I was here, they were calling this the Infinity Terrace, probably because it has the Infinity Pool. Um, obviously, like I said, it is 10 past 12 now, so this is very much set up, um, obviously, for the hotel. There are people out there, I don't want to film too much because people are obviously sunbathing, um, but they do set up like the dancing here and the pools there. So you can actually have your wedding here. Um, this one is the least private terrace that Rockabella has because, like I said, we are literally on this path, but again, you know, not everyone really cares about that. This is quite, especially far up, like it's more like down this end. Um, so the little sail here and then bits here. The, the cars are more this end. Um, there's fewer cars here. It's just more kind of people just walking here. So just above here, this is one of the other terraces where you can get married at Rockabella. I know a lot of people actually will get married on this terrace and then they will go and have the party down at the, the Infinity Terrace where I've just shown you or there's another terrace as well, which I'll hopefully show you. Um, again, this might have changed since we were here in 2019, um, but you did have to kind of hire both terraces separately. So there's like these three terraces that you can hire and you have to pay for the hire of each one um depending on you know whatever you want again look that might have changed so i really don't want to be giving out false information here um but that is just what i was told when i was looking around in 2019 um but that terrace up there as you can see is quite a bit more private because it is set quite high up from the road um so you you know i wouldn't be able to see if there was, if there was wedding going on up there i wouldn't be able to see any guests i'll just quickly show you it from this angle as well Hey guys, so I'm just sitting at the pool terrace in Rockabella. We're just going to get a drink here because you can get a drink here as well. Um, I will flip it around briefly, but I don't want to film too much of this because obviously people who are actually in the hotel are like sunbathing and things, so I don't want to be kind of like filming them. Um, but this terrace here, um, again, you can hire this whole terrace. It has the pool and then you can have your ceremony and reception here or just your reception and get married at the other terrace that I showed you from the road. Um, but again, this might have changed, but what they told me in 2019 when I came to look around was that there's four rooms, uh, four suites that are on the side um, here and you have to hire all four of the suites as part of the venue hire to have this bit. Um, but let me just flip you around quickly. Yeah. So these are the four suites here that um, you have to hire and then you can have your ceremony and party just over this section um, or just the um, reception here um, and then the, and then the um, ceremony elsewhere. Um, but like I said, I'm pretty sure you had to have all four of the suites that were poolside to be able to have this as private. Um, but do double check that though, because like I said, that was 2019. I'm just on the same road, so it is loud, but oh wait. Um, so this is Rockabella, um, so La Ciel, same as the other side of the path, um, La Ciel was just down here, 
and then we have the entrance um, of Rockabella here but to be honest with you if you're getting married at Rockabella you're pretty much not going to be needing to be dropped off on this road because you know probably more than nine times out of ten you're actually going to be staying at the Rockabella hotel itself um, especially the way that the packages work um, Sorry, here's Thomas. Here's Thomas and our car come to pick me up. But I just thought I'd quickly show you this. The next venue is the Venet Sanos Winery. I'm actually doing a voiceover of this because they were actually setting up for a wedding, which you can just see there um, on the day. So I didn't want to be talking too much. Um, the hotel that we've just passed there, that is the Suites of the Gods Hotel. And um, if anybody wanted to stay there, if any of you or your guests want to stay there before the wedding. Um, so the views here are incredible. This venue is more towards the Pagos village end of the island so it is further south than Amero Vigili where La Ciel and Rockabella are. A lot of people will not stay local to here they'll stay in Fira or Kamari or Parissa and they will just get the transport to this venue. It is a working winery as well. At the top here is the car park. This is just a car park for people who are basically at the winery on wine tasting or they're working here or visiting or at, they're at the wedding um but as you can see there's no road or anything in between um you your ceremony and the caldera view here and um, there are some steps to come down to the ceremony area um not too many steps but if you would prefer not to have a lot of steps for whatever reason uh, this is maybe something to consider for this venue that there is quite a few little steps down here i don't think from ask from me asking and i did ask in 2021 they don't provide the food here you have to hire the venue and then you get caterers in that is, again, please double check all that information there. Um, but that is what I was told when I inquired about this venue. Um, but it is an absolutely stunning, stunning view. The next venue I'm going to show you guys is Dana Villas. Now, I've started this up on the street in Fira Stefani. And I actually walk down and show you the walk down to the wedding venue. Um, the reason I decided to do this was uh, one question I see quite often from brides in the brides groups on Facebook is the questions about the stairs down to Dana Villas. So I really wanted to show you guys what the walk is like to get down to the wedding venue um, because there are, you always see a lot of rumors flying around that it is a lot of steps. Um, so I thought, you know, I'll just film the whole journey so you guys can gauge for yourself if you think it's a lot of steps or too many steps obviously you can kind of go from there dana villas is a hotel so you can get away from these steps if you love the venue by actually staying in the hotel the hotel is spread out a little bit so there will still be a little bit of you know walking up and down steps you know wherever you are but by staying at the hotel you can get away from that a little bit i have put you on double time because the video that i originally recorded was five and a half minutes so that basically meant it took me five and a half minutes to walk from the street in fira stefani down to the wedding ceremony area and then further down the cliff again to where the reception area is because the reception area is a little bit further down the cliff so five and a half minutes that is maybe a good time for you to gauge so this is the wedding ceremony area this is the terrace dana villas is better for smaller weddings i think they can accommodate up to 24 guests um but i think that's you know a little bit negotiable if you speak to them about it um dana villas is not as private a venue as you can see here these are balconies of hotel rooms here um when we actually stayed at dana villas um in the honeymoon pool suite and there was weddings going on um, whilst we were there and people were watching from their balconies and taking pictures and things so some people are gonna not mind about that some people are gonna care about that and um, that's totally personal preference um but after you've had your ceremony you then come down to the lowest part um, of the caldera cliff where they have the reception venue um so it's just a slightly a little bit further walk um down here uh, i think the reception venue is more private than the ceremony area for anyone who does care about privacy um but the views from dana villas are stunning um and like i said we stayed in the honeymoon pool suite and i could not recommend that more um if you do want to avoid the steps um, please just do stay here in this hotel because it is absolutely stunning, especially the rooms with the private pools. They 
were working actually um, here in the reception area. So I didn't actually go in because they were actually working on it, but that was the reception area just at the bottom of the steps there. I'm just at the Diamond Rock wedding venue. Uh, Thomas and I have just, we've been doing a hike today um, from Merrill Shilly, which is just over here. And we've hiked all the way to Ia. Uh, so I think it's about a 15 kilometer round trip. Um, but on the way, halfway between is this Diamond Rock wedding venue. So I thought I would sh quickly show you guys. Um, we did come and look at this um, in May, 2019, when we looked at our wedding. Um, and it was a really cloudy day, um, so it probably didn't do it justice, um, but it is actually a really beautiful setting. So you've got the area where you have the ceremony here, and you do also actually have the dinner here as well. This is a private villa. I think it's like a three bedroom villa. Um, I'll try and get a picture on the other side as well. It has a pool and a jacuzzi and you like, you hire, I think it was like when they were telling us, I think you hire it for like, um, it's just Thomas waiting up the hill there. Um, I think you hire it. I think it's like three nights and that's included in the total cost of the rental. Um, but it's quite good because you bride and groom can get ready here if you wanted to, because like I said, it's, it is separated into two. Um, so it's quite nice if anyone maybe hadn't heard of this one before, because this one is quite a bit of a, it's not as um, popular a venue. I think it's relatively quite new. Um, but this is definitely an option to consider because obviously you've got Scaros Rock over here which is gorgeous and then the sunset will be over here. This is the Diamond Rock venue from the other angle so you can see the, the pool there. So that's the pool that comes with the villa. Um, it's a really nice setting actually because it's completely private. There's nothing uh, in front of the view. It's totally on the Caldera Cliff. Um, there's absolutely pretty much nothing else around it other than the path that we're walking on which is the ancient um, route between Ia and Emer or Bajili. Um, but other than that, it is pretty much private. So guys, that brings us to the end of today's video. I really hope you found it helpful and informative. Um, if you have any questions about any of the venues, please drop them in the comments below and I'll do my very best to answer those for you or at least point you in the right direction as to who could maybe help you. Uh, Tom's just get back, getting back in the car after um, recording with the drone there. Um, if you did like the video today, please give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe. And I really hope to see you guys in my next one and good luck with planning your weddings. Bye guys.